and today we're redoing the live episode that I did yesterday. So let me explain to you. After I finished the English version of 10 tips for cartridge tattooing, I decided to do one in Spanish because a lot of people in Spanish were commenting and they were a little bit upset that they couldn't understand what I was saying. So what I decided to do is after the English version, I went ahead and did the same thing in Spanish. I saved it, I went to bed and this morning I wake up and I'm, you know, when I'm going to see how many people have uh, watched the video, I realized that a lot of people were, um, they couldn't find the video. So I started getting emails, I check Instagram and I'm like, what's going on? So I started going through my emails and someone emails me and I got a bunch of comments on Instagram after, uh, right after the post announcing the live broadcast. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna redo it because a lot of people have been asking for a redo today. So I'm gonna spend the time and actually since I did like, this is gonna be the third time because I did it in English, Spanish, and now in English, should be even better than yesterday. So. Today we're gonna to be talking about this guy's right here, cartridges. So I actually compiled 10 things, 10 tips, which I think are the top things that you should check when committing to a brand of cartridge, when buying cartridges, and when tattooing with cartridges. Especially if you don't have a lot of experience with cartridge yet, you're still tattooing with standard needles and you just wanna get uh, good pointers, I think this video is gonna help you guys out. And uh, you know, I hope uh, we can all come up with more tips because I mean, obviously there are not just 10. So uh, let me see if we're live on guys that actually uh, uh, was crying uh, because missed the live broadcast. So I'm gonna redo it and I think that uh, it's gonna be a little bit better than yesterday to be honest with you. So the first, I actually have my iPad right in front of me. So you're gonna see me looking down is because I'm looking at the pointer. So uh, tip number one, check the overall quality of the needle. And this one is a very this is that chip car of the uh, of the grip. So a lot of the times when you get those cartridges are don't have you know very good finish, you're gonna have locking problems. So that's one of the things. Uh, the other thing is that I would compare it with other cartridges just to make sure that the geometry is uh, similar. Because what's gonna happen, and this happened to me uh, a couple of times with brand new round liner probably there's going to be a lot of difference and you're gonna find yourself having to ratchet in between uh, cartridge a lot to get the right depth or to get the same depth uh, from let's say a five uh, liner so that's one of the things that I always do and then obviously you know I check uh, the needle inspect it like turn it around make sure that the tip is good and all that stuff now that is a very very generic uh, first step step number two what I do is I push the needle so uh, not all cartridges have the same type of needles. Not all needles actually have the same diameter in uh, cartridges. So you're gonna have cartridges that have number 12 caliber needles. You're gonna have other cartridges with number 10. And probably there are cartridges with even number eight which are super, super thin. I mean, I don't use them. And I've never seen them myself, to be honest with you, uh, because I'm not interested in something that thin. But I've heard of people like talking about that in forums or social media, I don't remember. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I am going to eject the cartridge. Let me just take this one right now. So I am going to be ejecting the cartridge and what this is gonna allow me to do is, I'll just do it like this. What this is gonna allow me to do is going, it's going to allow me to inspect the needle just to make sure that there are no burbs uh, uh, in the tip of the needle. And the other thing, one of the things I like to check is the spread of the needle, uh, the stack. Uh, let me see if I can show you. Especially magnums, you know, they're like two layers of needle piled top on top of each other. So uh, what I tend to do is if I'm not too happy with the way they're spread, I would actually poke the cartridge to its max and then I would actually flatten the needle a little bit like that with my nails. Of course, gloves, right? Uh, this is going to allow you to, uh, you know, to get a view of the needle if that's the type of configuration that you're happy with. Also, you can tell the taper of the needle. This one is a long taper. I can see because I can see the shaving of the tip of the needle that's a little bit thicker than, for example, I mean, uh, a little bit sharper than, for example, uh, T-Tex, which has a taper that's more like a, like a bullet point rather than like a long taper. So, uh, taper of the needle is something that you're gonna find as well that different brands, uh, they tend to use different type of tapers. So T-Tech, for example, is more like a bullet point. So the needle, instead of being like so sharp, it's more like a bullet, right? 
Uh, this one right here, which are the P cartridges, they are more like a, more like a spear, you know, and I like that taper because with this taper, you're not necessarily required to tattoo a super thin needle to get like smooth uh, transition, for example. You get better penetration and better uh, ink, uh, ink uh, penetration as well. Again, this is my, uh, this is my observation. Uh, so that's that, and that will be point number two. Now, moving forward, point number three, I think is a very, very important uh, point to check, and it says, check for side and up, down play. Um, all these needles that I have right here, again, let me just show you, I have like scramble all the brands that I use. I mean, some of the brands that I use, I also use some brands that are not here right now. But these needles right here are pretty much pretty decent needles that I'm happy with, uh, with most of the configurations. I like more uh, specific configurations than other. But right here, you know, I have a little bit of everything. But one of the things that I would do is, for example, let's take uh, a Cheyenne cartridge and let me demo demonstrate what I would be doing. So one of the things that I do is I actually wiggle the back of the needle a little bit just to see how much motion transfer to the tip of the needle. If you can see here, but if I move the the back of the cartridge, you're gonna see that there's not a lot of side play, and that's a good sign. Uh, why is it a good sign? Is because when the needle has a lot of side play or up and down play, uh, you're gonna find that you're gonna get a lot of splatter, you know, needles uh, ink splash while you're tattooing, especially when you're tattooing like in the faster setting. Uh, the needle seems to be unstable and kind of like clap on the on the bottom of the tip and splash. Uh, splash ink and that's something that obviously we want to avoid so check the needle for side plane make sure that the tip that the needle was designed for actually matches with the needle configuration I've seen uh, some needles that they use probably less mold and they try to fit as many configurations in one tip so sometimes you have one uh, configuration let's say for example a number nine magnum that's gonna fit right because the tip was designed for number nine but probably they also wanted to use the number nine tip for a number seven and then you're going to have a lot of side play and uh you're not going to like the performance when the new has a lot of side play like i said you're going to get splashing you're going to get uh rattling noise and that's not good the other thing is that um uh when you uh when you're checking the the back stem and and, and the whole needle also while you're pushing the needle please Check if the needle has also friction, if you encounter friction. This happened to me with a pretty uh, uh, well-known brand of needles. I got a box that I don't know what happened to, the, uh, to that batch, but kind of like the needle was grinding with something inside the, two, um, inside the cartridge, and apparently the, the back stem of the needle was actually rubbing with the inner part of the cartridge and kind of like a, a opposing a lot of friction. So. I found that I had to replace that needle. I thought something was wrong with my machine, and indeed was the was the needle. And the more the needle uh, uh, was working, the the warmer it got, and the the stickier it got. So again, that only happened to me one time with an entire box of needle, and uh, I reported that to the manufacturer. I mean, actually, a supplier. They just exchanged the box for me, and I guess they took care with the. Uh, uh, with a maker maybe it was like a bad batch or stuff like that but that's good because you don't want these things to happen to you in the middle of a tattoo and even though they seem like 10 points they're really easy to go through really quick probably in a minute you can check all that stuff so i do that uh, basically with all the needles that i'm going to be using and i tend to actually open all the packages so if i if i know that i'm going to be using five needles then what i do is i open them up all of them line them all up and leave them in the blister pack without uh without a cover uh, laying on the laying on the blister pack until I'm ready uh, to tattoo and if I don't like him I'm throwing I throw him away so that is that now point number uh, four okay point number four may seem like a very common sense thing to check on a needle I mean a lot of people uh, uh, avoid or, or waive that point but check the locking mechanism uh, not all needles are gonna lock the same in, in in the grip especially those needles are brand new I see this happening Usually with uh, a couple of brands, you know, their first releases have problems with the locking mechanism. And again, I'm not going to mention those brands, but uh, probably some of you know which needles uh, those are. They have problems with the locking mechanism, you know, and I'm, and I'm thinking, what's cool right now? It's probably something wrong with the grip. And in reality, it was just that needle. And throughout the box, 
I got the same problem and to the point that I actually stopped buying the random needle. So uh, check for locking mechanism. The other thing why you want to check for locking mechanism is not necessarily because the diameter of uh, the housing of the needle may, may have a problem or the actual locking mechanism, but sometimes the back of the cartridge, and let me actually zoom in right here. Uh, by the way, this needle is in perfect condition, but this little cap right here, uh, let me see if I can remove one. Here we go. So this little cap right here that I just removed, sometimes it's not actually uh, concentric with the housing and you end up with a little step right here. So what, what's going to happen is when that, and, and it varies from brand to brand because this thing tends to rotate sometimes. When that happens, uh, you're also going to encounter problems, you know, locking the, uh, the needle into the grip. So, you know, just pop the needle in, just make sure that it goes well and that's it. What happened one time, actually, with this brand of needle, one time I actually locked the needle, and when I removed it, the back of the, the needle actually stayed inside the, the tube. And then I realized it later on, because it did happen with another needle, that it was that the, the little cap right here in the back uh, had a little, bit, a little bit of a step. So it, was, it wasn't 100% it wasn't concentric with the house, and it was a little bit off-center. So when I did this, Obviously, uh, I kind of like catapult the back of the needle into uh, into the grip and it's staying in there. So I have to stop tattooing and address that right away. Uh, that is uh, point number four. So point number five talks about checking the tip of the needle. And now uh, we're going to check the tip of the needle for uh, several reasons. Number one, just to make sure that the tip of the needle matches with the needle that you're using, like I mentioned before. But also check if the tip of the needle is something that you're going to be comfortable with. Um, you're going to see that among the different brands, you're going to find different tips. Um, for example, well, these are kind of like the same, but let me show you, let me show you with these two needles right here. I'm just going to go down to the camera. So see, for example, right here, we have two different tips. Um, some tips are thicker than others. Some tips have this sidewall a little bit higher than others. Uh, some tips may appeal to you better than others. So. Um, I remember, you know, when tattooing with standard needles, I always liked the open magnums, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I would tattoo with something that reassembled like an open mag like this, uh, like this one, for example, right here, this one right here. So I am a huge fan of this brand right here, you know, only for magnums and that's it. But uh, I like them because the, the tips, uh, they are kind of like uh, slim and, you know, I like the profile. I just feel comfortable. I feel that I'm taking advantage of uh of the needle properly and sometimes some other tips where they're like too wide or too thick i kind of like feel like i'm a little bit thrown off by the geometry of the tip again i'm a little bit picky when it comes to uh to to my setup so again it may be something important for you it may not be something important for other tattoo artists but that's something that i recommend you check because some people like for liner diamonds and i've heard that uh legacy has diamond tips so um I actually have legacies right here, and these are uh, these are rounds because for you know, for small rounds like tie uh, five, three, and sevens, I like round tips. For but for things that are a little bit bigger, I actually prefer the diamond tips because I feel that I get more ink uh, shoved in into the skin. There there are other grips that I like from other brands as well. Okay, don't get me wrong, but uh, that's my preference. So if Probably I am going to use something a little bit thicker, uh, like a tight I mean, like an 11 round or like a uh, 11 shader or 14 shader. I'm probably gonna want to go with something that is kind of like a diamond shape or a shape that can actually hold more ink than a conventional, you know, straight tube. So that's just me again. Now number six. Number six talks about the hardness of the spring or the membrane. So. There are a lot of uh, brands out there that use either a rubber band or a piece of silicone or a spring, and there are some other brands that use the membrane. Also, I was in Germany, and there is this brand that actually uses magnets, okay? So instead of using uh, rubber band and the membrane now, some people found that they can use magnets, repelling magnets. Of course, they achieve exactly the same. Now, disclaimer. Uh, this needle, obviously, the first thing I did took it apart and I actually went through these points. And I'm like, okay, hold on one second. This needle has uh, 
magnets, but it also has a spring. So what I did is I removed, between the magnets, removed the spring, and I'm like, that can be, right? Why are you going to have magnets and springs? So what I realized, what I think is that they actually miscalculated the force of the magnet, and they couldn't get like a, like a proper spring uh, force to retract the needle, so they put a spring in between the magnets, which I think that, that kind of defeats the purpose of the system. But I mean, having magnets is a pretty good idea. It's a I mean, I guess that's fine. Uh, pretty interesting concept though. Uh, and again, I actually have the needle I'm probably gonna review at some point, because I, I brought like three actually, three in a pack and one that I took apart. Um, so again, let's not get sidetracked right here. Number seven. Uh, number seven talks about the consistency of the needle throughout a box or several boxes. Uh, this is something that probably I saw it happening more at the beginning or at the beginning of brands launching their cartridges where you would actually uh, get a needle and then get another needle from the same box and there, there would be inconsistency, either inconsistency in the way the needle was soldered, inconsistency uh, with the tension of the rubber band. So that is something that I like to keep an eye on. Uh, you know, I sound tattooing, you know, uh, I have my needles that I use all the time. You know, my setup always is going to have a five, uh, a type five, always, no matter what I do. Uh, my setup is always going to have a seven magnum, no matter what I do. So, you know, those type of setup of uh, needles that I use, uh, usually use a lot, I use them as a, a cue point to actually determine if I'm actually being uh, fulfilled, you know, throughout the whole entire box of needle. Um, and the reason why I'm saying this is, like I mentioned before, it happened before when that matter in the way they were made, you know, always pay, pay attention. So that's that number seven. Now, number eight. Number eight is going to be a question about whether you care about the membrane or like the membrane, or you just don't care about that. And I see a lot of comments. So guys, I'm not forgiving you guys. I'm not forgetting you guys. I mean, forgetting, not forgiving. I'm not forgetting you guys. I'm gonna be answering the comments right now, okay? So um, there are a couple of things that, uh, uh, you know, to keep in mind, uh, membranes usually, or before, or I don't know, but usually the, 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 the needles that have membrane, they were a little bit more expensive, right? Because the membrane and the way they were built, I guess. So uh, I suppose as a rubber band, you know, regular needle. So a lot of people like the membrane because uh, the cross-contamination factor, right? So the cross-contamination factor is something that uh, it works unto an extent, you know, just doesn't really work very well. A lot of people think that by using a cartridge with membrane, uh, that's it, you know, you don't have to worry about your grip. But remember guys, um, we handle the needle with our hands. So the moment you, let me switch right here and do an example right here. So the moment I'm tattooing with my dirty hands full of inks and uh, probably blood, and I hold the cartridge, I'm probably gonna do this, right? And as I'm doing this, I'm already contaminating the, the inside of the grip. So whether you have a membrane or not, I think the most important thing to keep in mind is whether your grip is out of cleavable or you can actually break your grip apart for proper sterilization or sanitation or cold sterilization, right? Um, some of the brands that actually preached about the membrane actually neglected that other part. Okay, so you have a cartridge where uh, ink doesn't come up to my grip, but all of a sudden I cannot clean the grip, uh, you know, for shit. So um, keep that in mind. I never had problems with standard needles. I never had a problem of ink traveling up to my tube, and if it happened, I was able to clean the tube, right? So that's gonna happen the same for, you know, for this type of needles. The membrane is gonna work to an extent. And also, even with membrane, you may be prone to actually leakage into the grip or the membrane can break or, you know, the membrane is not actually sealing the cartridge uh, completely. You know, it's just held in there by, you know, by the tension of the membrane itself. So you still can get ink traveling up your, your grip if, you know, if you're tattooing like this, for example, which obviously I don't know who tattoos like that. But, uh, it can happen sometimes that, you know, you're maneuvering or, you know, you're probably like doing this, looking at the design, and I see a lot of people doing that, and probably that's when they get that thing happening, when they're like thinking or looking at the piece, or they have the machine like that, and all of a sudden, we're tilting the machine this way. That's when things like that happen. So, um, keep that in mind. 
if uh, if the membrane is something that you don't consider necessary, probably you may save a couple of bucks by going with other brands that don't have the membrane. Now, if you like the membrane because um, you know you want the membrane, then just go with the membrane. Now, another thing to keep in mind about the membrane, uh, and again, I'm not knocking off the membrane because the membrane has its benefit. Okay. I like needles with membrane because uh, they actually are a little bit stiffer. Now, stiffer uh, cartridges, uh, usually with membranes, are going to require more powerful machines, you know, just to avoid the machine that's a warm up or the motor start heating up. So uh, that works good. And also, they work really good when you're tattooing really, really fast. You know, you're, you're one of those artists that cranks the machine super fast or maybe a super short stroke or a long stroke. And as the machine uh, increases the speed, you know, the harmonics uh, of the whole tattoo system tend to vibrate. So having needles that actually have a membrane will help you to stabilize the needle even more. But again, I'm talking about maybe 10 and up volts. You know, that's when that would actually come to play. Um, I actually, I never tattoo that fast. Probably the fastest I go when my machines are nine or 9.5 max even for lining. But I know that some people, they like to bring the machines really, really high. And you're one of those artists probably uh, needles with membrane or maybe some uh, uh, configurations with membrane are going to be more suitable for you. And you can actually do the test. I don't have a power supply with me right now. But for example, if I grab a needle with no membrane and run it at 9.5 and then I run another needle at 9.5 with membrane, you're going to realize that the, the sound completely changes. Uh, so that's something to... Uh, to pay attention. Now, number nine talks about price versus quality, right? So back in the days, we did not have a lot of options, you know, and there was only one brand and the price was what the price was. You know, you had to pay that and kind of like, that's it, you know, uh, take it or leave it. Let me see. Just want to make sure that we got a lot of people today too. So, you know, that was it, you know, either uh, either you like the brand or you go back to standard needles. Now, these days, there are a lot of brands, you know, and again, we all know that there are a lot of brands that are uh, rebranded needles, and that's okay, you know, because why reinvent the wheel if it's already invented? So what a lot of companies are doing is um, they're putting their own needles or, or they're actually asking the manufacturers to load the, the cartridge with like specific configurations. So yes, you may find uh, brands that, you know, they basically are supplying a lot of people, but among those brands, they may have some configurations that you don't find from the other supplier uh, or needle maker. So these days, with so many brands out there, probably there are, I don't know, maybe 50 brands of needle these days uh, from all over the world, uh, including, you know, uh, rebrands or even more. Now, prices are, you know, got very, very competitive. So you no longer are stuck to one brand. Right now, you have a lot of options. And one of the things that I recommend is that you guys uh, spend the time to maybe... You know, when you want to try a brand new needle, do not commit 100% to the needle uh, or to several boxes until you try a couple of samples. So a lot of uh, uh, suppliers of needles, they actually have sample packs. And, you know, that's a good way to actually get to know or get familiar uh, with the brand and see if you like the, the, the bill, the, the, the needle, uh, uh, the needle quality and, and all these points that, that we're uh, mentioning right here. Now, point number 10. And again, this is another personal uh, experience. What happened to me at one point is when I actually like a needle, I try to see if they, they carry you know all the configurations that I usually use in my tattoos. So a lot of these brands, when I find a brand that I like for a particular needle, then I realize that they may not carry that specific configuration. Uh, I'm sorry, that specific uh, uh, brand will not carry it specific configurations that I like. So say for example, all of a sudden, you know, I'm trying this brand of needle. And uh, by the way, this one has a membrane too, and it's a really good needle as well. Um, they may not have, I don't know, an 11 Kurt Magnum buck pin, and that's something that I probably would want. So uh, this is the reason why I end up with a lot of uh, brands, uh, you know, these are my own needles. I end up with a lot of brands because I like different things from the different manufacturers. You know, there are certain needles that I like, that I like better from uh, one brand. There are some magnums that I like better from another brand. And there are magnums that I like in general from, uh, from other brands. So good thing that right now we have that variety. Uh, not like back then, we were stuck to a couple of uh, needle configurations. And that was it. Basically, 
what was there is what we had to choose from. So uh, these are the 10 points. I'll go over really quick. Number one, overall quality if you need a cartridge. Number two, push, uh, push the back stand to inspect the needle. Number three, check for side plate and up plate. Uh, number four, check the locking mechanism. Number five, check the tip design of the needle just to make sure you're comfortable with it. Number six, check uh, uh, the hardness of the spring, uh, you know, to see if it's comfortable, if it's not actually stopping or friction in between. Uh, number seven, consistency throughout the brand. Once you decide what are you going to work or something that you like, just make sure that there's consistency throughout the box or, or batches. And uh, number A, member or no member, like I mentioned before, you may like the membrane, you may not like the membrane, is that important for you? Sometimes a little bit more expensive. So things to think about. Number nine, price versus quality. You know, there's a lot of competition right now. There are a lot of great needles. There's also a lot of junky uh, needles as well. So uh, you can choose, you know, whatever your budget is, I'm sure you're gonna find a needle that's gonna suit you. And number 10, availability and number of configurations. So just make sure that once you say, okay, I like this brand, don't think that they're gonna carry all the needle because probably that's not gonna be the case. Although most brands these days, they carry at least basic needle configurations. So that is the 10 points, uh, 10 tips about cartridge tattooing, specifically about cartridges. Now, I'm gonna go back to the chat and I'm gonna try to answer some of the questions right here. And I love it because you guys always have conversations in between you guys and that's really cool. I just wish YouTube would actually post these comments because they're so helpful. You guys are uh, asking and answering yourself. I really love this. I wish there was an option to actually, maybe there is, let me see, live chat. Um, yeah, no, there is, there's not. The options here give me enable live chat, enable slow mode, uh, let me just put, uh, post to every 60 second per person. Oh, that's cool. Automatically block spam messages. See, you know, I, I don't have that. Fosh. Let me see this thing. Now I don't know what I press. Okay, done, right here. So let me see. Uh, people are saying hello from Las Vegas. Uh, the usual su suspects always here. Jane Finoff is here. Chris Ajax is here. Uh, what else? Uh, Giovanni Don Bosco is saying it doesn't mean that you're going to be giving away another grip. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be giving another uh, grip. And the guy that won the grip is actually here. His name is uh, uh, Steven Merzine. Yeah, right there. So he won the grip. I think he got in touch today with customer service. It was just one grip a week, you know. Uh, so this live broadcast did happen. I want you to know that it's not that it didn't happen. It just happened, then I couldn't archive it. Uh... Chris Ingle is actually on vacation, but he's actually sticking around to catch the live. Awesome. Uh, Randy Ballesteros, he says, finally in English. Yeah, my man. Every time we do a live broadcast in English, people complain that, on the chat, why don't you do this in Spanish? Okay, so yesterday I did it in Spanish, and then people complain why I didn't do this in English. But I did it in English before, the only thing that just disappeared. Uh... Juan Montiel say, awesome, I missed it yesterday, awesome. Uh, okay, so, well, da, 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 da. okay, so Juan Montiel, we have some intel right here, says that needle jig, the legacy needle, which are these ones right here, they actually have number eight uh, buck pin. Those are super, super thin buck pins. I used them back in the days on standard needles. Uh, and again, I think you really have to know what you're doing uh, not that I don't know, but the way I tattoo, I think those needles would actually not suit me or will cause a lot of uh, a lot of scaring, you know. Um, but again, usually when the needle is very, very thin, you actually have to slow down the machine as well. Uh, what happens is if you have a needle that's too thin and you're poking really fast hole, you end up chewing the skin rather than, than poking hole. So that's, you know, that's what I encounter. I tend to tattoo kind of fast, so that's why I stick to the 12 and to the 10s. Uh, <laughs> so Steve saw last night. He's saying, "I was checking." Okay, uh, okay, okay. So we have Dante same. It's hey, Gaston. The video blog is amazing. Also, I need to ask you about the sign. There's gonna be two types of motors: stronger and uh, and weaker. Can you tell us about how we should order? Blah blah blah. Uh, the sign is going to be another video. Uh, we said that maybe September, Octoberish. 
Uh, we are working on it. We moved the shops to two, uh, two new warehouses. One warehouse still doesn't have uh, full um, electricity yet because we have to revamp the whole infrastructure of the entire park to get electricity in our warehouse. So coming up, more updates about the sign. Uh, okay. All right, bro, I love your merchandise and I just finished watching your Spanish video, but can you recommend the best cartridges to use with your grips and machine? That would be great. Okay, this is Thomas Cruz. A lot of people ask that question, but you can use basically any cartridge with any of our machines. And let me just show you uh, right here, especially with our grips. You know, our grips are designed to work with any um, with any machine. So number one, you can use it with any of our machines. Number two, you can use any needle. And number three, you can use this grip with other machines as well. So you don't necessarily have to have our machines to use our grips, but you're gonna realize that in our grips, you're gonna be able to fit all the cartridges with no problem, no problem, no problem. So that's that. Uh, this is the Click Ergo. They come in different colors, pretty cool. Actually, we have some new colors on the website, some limited edition. And since I'm here talking about cartridges, let's talk about, this is kind of like uh, my, uh, my early prototype. This is the Click Ergo Disposable right here. And let me show you guys. The Click Ergo Disposable, let me just move these guys right here for a second. The Click Ergo Disposable is actually the same exact profile as the Click Ergo in aluminum. The only difference is that the Click Ergo features a whole new internal mechanism. So um, it's not like this one doesn't have a ratchet like the Click Ergo in aluminum, but it has a ratcheting system just like the Click Ergo in aluminum. Also, you cannot take it apart uh, unless you, you, you break the grip. So this one will not come apart. It just goes and stops. And if you continue fiddling with the grip, you're gonna destroy it. So we wanted to make sure that they were gonna be used and gonna be disposable. So they're gonna come actually, every box is gonna have 24 grips multicolor. So you're gonna have the orange, you're gonna have the green, you're gonna have the red, you're gonna have the black, you're gonna have the gray, all in one box. So you're probably gonna have several of those per box. So Click Ergo Disposable is about to drop maybe next month or so. Pre-orders are gonna start soon. We're gonna start doing also uh, direct drop ship from our factories overseas to all our uh, all of our distributors. This is the only product that we don't manufacture in-house, but of course it was engineered 100% by yours truly, me. And um, it works really good. So what else guys? Let me just scroll down to all the comments. Let's uh, copy friends list. Give me a follow guys. All right. Okay, so John Larson, I use T-Tech, one membrane did blow out. So T-Tech now makes them with membrane, probably. I'm not using T-Tech that much this day, so I wouldn't know. I think I had a, a drive rod set too deep. Yeah, that would do it, guys. So that's another thing, where you're setting the needle, uh, especially when you, you have a new machine, be really careful because depending on the geometry of the machine, the dry bar that may work for one machine may not work for another machine. And sometimes if you just like trust the dry bar and you just slide that tube down, the dry bar may actually uh, damage the cartridge. So, um, been trying a few different carts. Anyone is having problem with their car spitting uh, spitting ink? Well, I just mentioned a couple of points that are gonna be the cause of uh, spitting. One other thing that I would say that can make can cause your cartridge to spit ink if it's the dry bar. It's a little bit bent. So, I mean, let me just do a demonstration right here. So, if the dry bar is a little bit bent, you're not necessarily pushing the cartridge completely straight. So, that could also cause that the dry bar is actually you know, kind of, kind of like causing the back stem of the cartridge to rattle. Therefore, uh, you know, you, you may experience some ink uh, spitting. But for example, with a Magnum, it's really easy to actually fix that. And let me show you uh, with this cartridge right here. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why I like these two brands right here. One is gray, one is black. The tip is a little bit different in between brands. But one of the things that I like this cartridge is because I can actually remove uh, the tip, and you can only do that with this brand and probably some other brand out there that has a similar design. Uh, but if I want, I can actually bend the needle stack. So now I add a little bit of tension. So I'm gonna ensure 
that the needle sits touching the bottom of the tip a little bit better. And sometimes if there is a little bit of gap in there, that's where you get that ink spitting. So, um, you know, just make sure that you guys uh, check those points and hopefully you're not going to have those problems anymore. All right. Um, so people are having awesome conversations here. Hey, Levkin, what's up, man? I will send you the link. Levkin is one of our pro team artists from Poland. Check him out. His work is completely sick. So, uh, yeah, definitely I'm going to send you the link so you can actually, uh, uh, check it out. And I really like this because, um, today's topic or yesterday's topic, which is about cartridges, you know, uh, I assume that a lot of people, uh, would actually you know keep those things in mind but of course you know tattoo artists they care about their craft they care about tattooing and the least amount of time they can spend fiddling with things the better for tattooing but you know cartridges are something very very new and i'm sure that um you know as the years go by people are gonna uh, you know do this type of uh tests and stuff like that you know from the get-go so uh, I like to help you guys out. If you guys have any other uh, comments, any other tips, you know, feel free to drop them after the video goes archived after this uh, live broadcast, and uh, you know, make sure to interact even after the video. I really appreciate it if you guys can actually go back and kind of like uh, uh, you know uh, talk about what we talk because YouTube right now is not letting me uh, post all this comment, and it sucks because it would have been so nice for people to see what we talk about tonight. So guys, this is uh, coming to an end. I have more videos coming up uh, this week, probably tomorrow, the day after. I'm going to be doing the Ask FK Irons. That's a show that happens every uh, week, uh, any random day of the week. And we go and address a lot of the questions that have been popping throughout the week in social media, emails, convention, yada, yada, yada. It's more like a live uh, Q&A. So... Uh, Check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash official FK Irons. And also next Sunday, uh, probably I'm not going to be available next Sunday for the live broadcast on, broadcast on Sunday. So I'm probably going to make it happen on Monday. But we have another uh, exciting topic. And I got more news, guys, for you. Uh, news that you guys have been waiting for. So, guys, thank you for watching this video. Uh, sorry for yesterday deleting the, the prior video. Stay cool. See you soon, guys. Take care.